Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Explorer Note read-through for Genesis Part 2. If you haven't already seen Part 1, I'll leave a link in the top right-hand corner, but we continue with the notes from Nida. When we last saw Nida, she had made her way into the aberrant side of the ship through a series of air ducts that run underneath the ship itself. She had managed to gather some soil samples and was making her way back. So sit back, relax and enjoy Part 2 of the notes from Nida on Genesis. I spent a frantic few minutes hyperventilating and waiting for the first of five underground airlocks to cycle after leaving the contaminated zone. Even after I'd run through three levels of decontamination and had shed the personal protection equipment I'd worn in the hot zone, I felt unclean. The entire time I was crawling aft through kilometres of ducts and access ways, I felt like there was something at my heels. I expected to get in all kinds of trouble when I got back to our ring, but no one had time for that kind of thing now. Perry surprised me with a hug when she saw I was still alive, and I surprised myself by breaking into sobs of relief. At least it wasn't for nothing, I guess. I was the first to bring back samples of the contamination to test. Xenobiology isn't really my thing. I generally do biomechanical work at the micro level. I know how to run samples of the invasive flora and fauna from our contaminated ring through our array of analytical equipment, but when it comes to interpreting the results, I'm mostly at a loss. Anyone could see that these invaders were wildly exotic and demonstrably hostile, but beyond that, I'd just be guessing at what I'm looking at. That said, I'm relatively sure that a lot of what I've sampled were genetically modified organisms, like our mirwings, possibly created using commandeered equipment in the other ring. Unlike mere wings, all of these organisms seem to have been created to establish an aggressive perimeter defense. Defense of what? I'm not exactly sure. I'm back to suspecting our Homodeus visitor is responsible, but I haven't even mentioned the most damning evidence. I think I'm seeing traces of element in these samples, the same alien material that poisoned our home planet. Element incorporated into living, mutated tissue. If I'm right, this is extremely bad news. My findings about the invasive life forms I sampled in the other ring set off a full-on panic response in the crew. Our engineers are speeding up their plan to detach our ring from the ship entirely, hoping to keep our biological archives from being contaminated. Everyone's afraid to talk about what might be happening to our human colonist cargo in our sister ring, because that's too horrible to think about. Whether the transhuman entity that visited our ship is still with us, or whether the artificial intelligence she left behind took over half of our systems, something is using the ship as a petri dish for engineering exotic and dangerous new life forms. For the first time since our ancestors left Earth parsecs behind, we might be fighting a losing war with a hostile transhuman force. So I did something impulsive, maybe even treasonous. Hey, someone had to try something. While almost everyone else was preoccupied with retaking the ship, I tried to re-establish contact with HLNA, that invasive intelligence I'd found in the Genesis simulation. This time I used a sort of process of elimination. Assuming it managed to create a digital blind spot to hide in, I figured I could find it by establishing where it wasn't, like using infrared to search for a heat signature against a snowfield. Once I'd coloured in all the negative space, I jumped into that void in the simulation and found myself immediately pleading with the AI to stop the corruption of our ship's systems. I should have sent someone braver to negotiate. I logged out of my second close encounter with our rogue artificial intelligence more confused than ever. If its creator really wasn't here with us anymore, what exactly was invading the other ring? Wait, what was it that HLNA said? about colonists being woken up prematurely. That's something I can check out. Sure enough, colonists are stirring all over the ship. I can only confirm a few instances of anyone outside their pods and loose in the ring so far, but we definitely have a new disaster in progress. What's worse is that I can't seem to track anyone down in charge at the moment to report this to. It looks like the rest of the crew has gone to ground, and I'm thinking I should probably seek shelter for myself at this point. I packed up everything I needed to keep an eye on our automated environmental maintenance and dropped into the subsurface tunnels and ductwork to hide. Good thing I know my way around the superstructure. I can hold out down here indefinitely if I have to. 
even if I don't feel like it's safe enough to pop my head up for fresh food. Enough provisions and stores are accessible for several lifetimes. Won't be much of a life to look forward to though. I've spent what seems like cycles down here trying to raise anyone else from the crew, but the whole comm system seems to be on the blink. I can't even reach Genesis anymore to kill time in a sim. After all my years spent studying soil biota, guess I know what it feels like to be a burrowing insect hoping to escape notice. Turns out, it kind of sucks. After a lot of crawling around conduits and splicing cables together, I was able to patch into the surveillance feeds to get a topside view. The experience wasn't like watching archival records, but it was definitely educational. For one thing, I confirmed that some of the crew were still alive up there. I called out when I saw Perry working on a terminal junction before I remembered that she couldn't hear me. Closer to the junction with the core, it's obvious that the progress stalled out on the engineering project to detach our ring. It looks like the crew had to abandon their work sites. I'm hoping that's not for good. That sort of thing's way beyond my abilities. And those biomes can only stay uncontaminated for so long if we can't put some space between us and whatever's taken over our sister ring. I found some documentation on the engineering plan for ring separation and I tried teaching myself the procedure. Really, I did. I just can't picture myself risking our ring like that. If I screw up, I could send us careening back into the fuselage, tearing open these biomes and spilling everything out into naked vacuum. I'm no hero, I'm just a dirt scientist. Or I was, before all this happened. Now I'm just another grub tunnelling around the underfoot and waiting for some predator to dig me up and make a meal of me. Down here in the dark, I'm just trying to survive as long as I can. It's been too long since I've spotted anyone else from my crew in the topside surveillance footage, still. I've been lying awake thinking about who I did spot in the gardens up there. A colonist, alone and out in the open. What if I'm the only one who knows about this? I couldn't live with myself if I didn't try to help that lost colonist. I keep picturing what it would be like to wake up from Genesis in one of those tanks, with no support staff to greet or orient you. Squinting in the artificial sunlight, Wandering around strange forests and meadows with no idea what's bearing down on you, no matter what the simulation tried to prep you for. While I'm working up the nerve to make a rescue attempt topside, I've relocated to the spot under the last sector I spotted him in on the live surveillance feed. I'm pretty sure I'm within half a kilometre of where the colonist is, or under the location at least. Now I just need to come up with a plan to get their attention. I'm an idiot. I wasted a bunch of time trying to come up with a way to hack into the terminal on the surface so I can flash a message to the colonists wandering around our ring. And then it hit me. They had on an exosuit, which means a visor with a heads up display. I realized I can broadcast directly into that helmet and put information right in front of the colonists face. I decided to try beaming a line of sight message at them by hacking a nearby infrared laser cluster. I'm no communications expert, but the risk of a free space optical signal being intercepted seemed minimal, and I figured that it'd be hard to jam at short range. What if doing this gives away my location though? It occurs to me that our invader might be using this colonist as bait. Once I made contact with our stray colonist, I explained where and when we are, and tried to describe the threat we're facing. I'm guessing that was probably a lot to absorb, depending on information recall from the Genesis simulation. I beamed over some schematics of the local subsurface crawlways and conduits, hopefully with the access hatches clearly highlighted, then I shut it all down and waited. I had a long wait. Almost half a cycle passed before something tripped the silent alarm I'd set on the hatches in this sector. My heart was in my throat. What was I going to do if one of those monstrosities found its way down here to me? Wave a soil probe at it? Luckily for me, it was just my new friend, the colonist. I took it as a good sign that my colonist friend was conscientious enough to seal the hatch again. Plus, I wasn't alone anymore. We sized each other up for a while before my new friend popped his helmet off to frown at me. He wanted to know why a kid like me was risking my neck for him. Even though I was sick with relief to see another human face, his tone set me off. I reminded him that I was the one who led him to safety. He apologised for being short with me and offered to shake hands. I took his hand hoping he wouldn't crush mine with that gauntlet he was still wearing. 
We introduced ourselves. He said his name was Gabrielle. For the first time, I was glad for the training we'd had on colonist reintegration. I could fall back on all those conversational prompts and remember to offer Gabrielle food and drink from our stores. And it felt good to play host. My new friend Gabrielle turns out to have been a prospector in his previous life, during a time that was later called the Gold Rush. He's been exhausting me with questions about mineral distribution on the rings, and he got really excited when I brought up the mining capabilities of our striders. I'm starting to appreciate the unlikelihood of the two of us winding up here at this moment in time. It's like the beginning of a bad joke. A miner and a soil scientist meet on a spaceship at the end of history. Gabrielle wants to rustle up some striders to ride into the contaminated ring like some kind of cavalry, and it almost feels like we're living in one of my simulations. Now if only I can convince myself that I've got what it takes to play the hero in real life. Gabrielle asked me not to call him a colonist. He resents being cast in that role, which I can respect. Genesis simulation aside, the last thing he remembers before waking up on a spaceship was being waylaid and killed by a mob of settlers for his mining claim. Impressive, to hold a grudge for almost a millennium across thousands of parsecs. No wonder I spotted him wandering a riverbank in the foothills. The setting must have reminded him of his native gold rush territory. I wonder if he had already tried panning the river for gold flakes. He really lit up when I described how we could fit striders with a pulverizing beam rig for excavation. If I'm being honest, he seemed almost too interested in that configuration for the quadruped's head. I guess a strip mining rig might make a useful weapon against the kind of invasive contamination that I'd seen in the other ring. Like laser surgery to cut out skin tumours. Maybe worth a try. I don't think I trust Gabrielle. And it's not just because I was disappointed in finally meeting one of these people. After dedicating my life to keeping their glorious future alive, I don't know that I expected gratitude exactly, but I sure didn't expect one of them to be so irritable and self-involved. I'm trying to remind myself that he never asked to have his memories reconstructed and jammed into a body in some generation ship in interstellar space. All of that aside, something is just off about Gabrielle. I know that our systems are breaking down, but it feels like he was rushed through the Genesis simulation without time for any of his orientation to take. And how messed up are our protocols that this is the first guy who got revived? Out of all the personalities we have archived, guess I'll just have to fall back on my training and hope for the best. So that concludes the notes from NIDA on Genesis Part 2. We will of course be continuing with the story of Ark and the notes from Gabrielle. And those of you who have already seen my note read through from Santiago may have your suspicions about this gold prospector from Alta California. So we'll continue with the story. Of course, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.